بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد This is another episode in which we comment on بغية المتتبع لحل ألفاظ الروض المربع and we are reading the section, the last section of the book which is about visiting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we reached the uh, part uh, on page 460, 464. Uh, uh, رحمه الله تعالى ونفعنا بعلومه وعلوم مشايخنا في الدارين آمين ثم يصلي تحيات المسجد ركعتين خلاص you entered the masjid and you are supposed to pray تحيات المسجد two ركعات normally like any other تحية however he here mentioned a very specific place to pray these ركعات uh, he said جانب المنبري تجاه صندوق المصاحف جاعلا عمود المنبري حزو منكبه مستقبلا السارية التي تجاه الصندوق ويجعل الدائرة التي بقبلة المسجد بين عينيه لأن نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يأم بالناس في هذا المكان A very specific description of where to pray Not sure if these things still exist there at the same place Probably not because he's describing like the box of Al Masahif, you see. And uh, I have never been there before. However, he's describing a circle that is in the Qibla of the Masjid and he's describing a certain uh, one of the pillars that you um, pray, um, that you should go and pre- pray near that pillar because the Prophet ﷺ used to lead people there. It's a very beautiful thing that you are trying to follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ to seek the barakah of the Prophet ﷺ by doing these things even after 1,500 years or so. So it's a very beautiful thing. I'm not sure if these things still exist. However, the concept itself is beautiful. And you can understand this in the light of what we mentioned before when we said that he وسلم, walked on this land. So when you walk on this land, on the same land, you have these feelings and you take care of these things. You do not ride if you can. You walk in like politely. And we mentioned that before. It is the same concept here. ثم يخرج من باب المقصورة. القبلي إلى القبر الشريف المظهر المنيف فيقف متأدبا أو فيقف متأدبا hmm. uh, He mentioned that you will get out and you will go to the chamber the chamber of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam where where the chamber is the room in which the chamber uh, يعني exists and uh, he described uh, the grave as al qabr al-Sharif and it is an honored grave definitely an honor an honored grave because it has the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his uh, his body is the best thing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hmm. uh, and there is nothing better uh, what is connected to this uh, honored body of him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he called it the purified grave, the purified qabr. Mm. And he mentioned ver- a verse of poetry that is written there and it is a very beautiful verse of poetry and I do not think that it still uh, exists. I'm not sure I have never been there. However, yani all the beautiful verses of poetry are removed, even the ones that were uh, uh, yani that uh, the Sultan of the Ottoman state uh, commanded people to to put there uh, 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 around the grave on the walls uh, uh, the, 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 the poetry that says uh, 
إني إذا أسامني ضيم يروعني أقول يا سيد السادات يا سندي they, they call this extreme and they, they, they actually fight and resist anything like this الوهابية هداهم الله and, uh, and uh, the grave it, it is still surrounded with very beautiful poetry but all what they consider problematic the problematic verses what they call problematic has already been uh, removed in a very ugly way Wallah al Mustan. Here uh, he mentioned a, a, yani a very nice uh, verse of uh, poetry. Qif wa qfata zulli wal itraqi da adabin fa'inda hadratihi yustalzamu al adabu to remind you that you have to be polite there around the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if you are not yani, polite, even if it's not your nature, even if you are a layman. Uh, you, you do not have the manners of scholars and you do not act like scholars you will have to force it because there near him sallallahu alayhi wasallam things are different qala wa yaqifu muqabalata wajhihi sallallahu alayhi wasallam mustaqbilan jidar al hujrati wal mismar al fidda fi al rukhamat al hamra now he's describing how to stand near the grave of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam or facing the grave of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam facing the wall of the chamber in which the Prophet ﷺ lies and facing that uh, nail that is made of uh, silver I'm not sure if these things still exist but if you go there you will be facing yani, if you go there just do anything but in the end you will be facing the wall of the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and he kept describing where and when, uh, where and how. He said, "Nahu arba'ati azru'im min al-sariyati bi zawiyat al-maqsura wa yajalu al-qindil." And he's even describing things that might not exist there anymore. Wa yajalu al-qindil ala ra'sihi mustadbir al-qibla. So the issue is that your back will be facing the qibla. So you'll be giving your back to the qibla, and you'll be facing the wall of the grave of uh, the chamber or the uh, the the wall of the grave of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam next you have the important part wa yaqulu assalamu alayka ya rasulullah wa la ba'sa in zada he will say assalamu alayka ya rasulullah this is very basic assalamu alayka ya rasulullah wa la ba'sa in zada and it's fine to to add to this in the explanation he says Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is also fine to say so Lakin yakunu thalika min ghayri raf'i sawt bal bi qadri ma yusmi'u nafsahu min ghayri mani'in li anna hurmatahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mayyita ka hurmatihi hayya you, you say it, but without raising your voice. Do not raise your voice. Do not use a loud voice. Why? You just use the voice that, that, uh, that makes you hear yourself. Why? Because his respecting him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his, the, the, the respect of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, respecting him, when he is dead, and when he is alive, it is the same. لقوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون. So do not raise your voice. And do not talk to the Prophet ﷺ in a loud voice. When he tells us that I need to act like the Prophet ﷺ as if he is still alive. When I need to act as if he is still alive. Because respecting him after his death is the same thing. It's the same thing as if he was still alive. This establishes a concept in the nafs of a Muslim that we do not keep differentiating between when the Prophet was alive and when, when the Prophet is 
dead. And the word the Prophet ﷺ is dead is difficult and it makes one suffer when he says it. But I need to say this and I need to keep saying this so that we remove the illusion of considering the Prophet ﷺ nothing because of being in that state. The Prophet ﷺ is not has not vanished. The Prophet ﷺ transferred, transported, moved from this, from this universe, from this life, from this state to another one, to another state. And you know the hadith. The prophets are alive in their graves. You say so, well, someone will, will come and say, you say so, so that you reach the conclusion that we can still change the Shari rulings. No. On that we are clear. When the Prophet ﷺ was still alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the deen. So he didn't complete the deen by taking the life of the Prophet ﷺ when he was still alive. But your what you consider, things that you consider, like tawassul, like seeking the barakah, like visiting him ﷺ, all these things are the same. But it is, but we say alive and dead to just facilitate how we understand certain, certain concepts, like the concept of the Sahabi, for instance, like other concepts related to al ahkam al shari This is important. But all the other concepts, the manners, all the other considerations, they, they should not change. You go there and you do a salam as if he is still alive and you do not raise your voice and everything. It has been reported from uh, Nafa. The, uh, the, the Mawla uh, of uh, Ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, radiyallahu anhuma, he said, Nafi said, I saw Abdullah ibn Umar more than 100 times. He comes to a rawda and he says, Assalamu ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu ala Abi Bakr, Assalamu ala Abi, he means his father, and then he would leave. This is someone who is visiting. The one whom he loves, or the ones whom he loves, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. Hmm. Uh, the next part is really important, and please listen to me carefully, and p write in the comments that you heard me saying this, and that you promised me that if you ever go there, you will do it for me, and you will do it for everyone who tells you to do it. The next part, he says, وَإِنْ حَمَّلَهُ أَحَدٌ سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مِنْ فُلَانٍ وَيُسَمِّيهِ وَإِنْ حَمَّلَهُ أَحَدٌ سَلَامًا If someone told the visitor, the one who is going to visit, like relate, go say salam to the Prophet ﷺ from me. So someone like me, Yusuf for instance, I tell someone like you, Anyone go and when you go visit, you are visiting, for instance. خلاص, I know that you are visiting. Go and when you go, tell him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that I am greeting him, that I'm sending him my salam. So he says, وَإِنْ حَمَّلَهُ أَحَدٌ سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مِنْ فُلَانٍ وَيُسَمِّيهِ and he would name him. So he would tell the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مِنْ يُوسف سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مِنْ مُحَمَّدٍ Please put in the comment that you've heard me saying so, and that you will relay this message to anyone who knows me, so that you tell them that I'm here telling you, and this should reach you, and this is me telling you to do so. Whenever, whether I'm dead or alive, whenever you go to the Prophet tell him that I'm sending him as salam and if I know you 
come and approach me and say, I am going to the Prophet ﷺ and I will repeat my message again and I will tell you things to, to tell him وسلم, on my behalf. And this is a very beautiful thing that we people who cannot reach him وسلم, people like you or anyone who goes uh, regularly or anyone who, who gets to go even once tell him وسلم, that there are people who are sending him salam. This is said while we know that when I say sallallahu alayhi wasallam right now it reaches him according to the authentic hadith but yet he mentioned that when we tell you to go and give salam you do it it has a different meaning it has a different meaning but people have very narrow minds because of that because of being affected by the salafi wahhabi who restrict things to something that if we call it Zahiri, the Zahiriya will be insulted. Wallahu al-Musta'an. The next poet says, ثُمَّ يَسْأَلُوا لِأَهْلِهُ وَإِخْوَانِهِ الشَّفَاعَ We will read this next time, inshaAllah. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam wa salli lahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.